Praise God for this beautiful day. I enjoy uh, being here today with you guys. I dearly love your youth, this church. Uh, a while ago, I worked in that Des Moines, Iowa, and I was here every week on their youth services, and it was a pleasure. Thank you guys to the pastors, to this uh, ministries, uh, ministers of this church. You have a blessed youth, so um, occupy them as much as possible so they wouldn't spend their time in, in void or on their cell phones. Just use them as much as you can. They're great youth. May God bless all of you. Um, I'd like to start with a, with a short story um, of something that happened back in Soviet Union uh, in the communist era. There was an atheist who came in into one uh, small town and he gathered all the people together. And for about an hour and a half, he was giving them a lecture of Christ not existing, that there is no God. And he was trying to prove scientifically, he used different methods to prove his point that God does not exist. And after about an hour and a half, he called to the people that gathered, and he was like, can anyone prove that God do exist? And everything I just said has no meaning, no point. And so he asked them a question, and nobody, nobody uh, stood up or nobody did anything. And he asked them again. And all of a sudden, from the back row, an old gentleman, older gentleman, uh, walked up to the podium. He stood up, looked at all the people, and he said, Jesus has risen. Christos воскрес. Christos воскрес. Christos воскрес. So, back, what we just did is we, we congratulated everyone with Jesus' resurrection. And when somebody says Jesus is risen, the whole congregation replies back, indeed, he is risen. And so when he stood up and he says, Jesus has risen, everybody who was there replied back, indeed, he is risen. And there was no need for more proof. There was no need for more proof. He took all his lecture papers and he left. And everybody went to their houses because Jesus exists. God exists. And Jesus loves every single one of us. But it didn't, it didn't happen just like that. He paid a big price for our salvation. And um, I'd like to share another story where uh, at one, in one service, the pastor stood up to, and greeted his congregation and he said, uh, we have a very special guest today at our service, and I would like him to share his testimony, share his word with you guys today. Uh, he is very dear to me, and I want you to pay attention to what he says. And he came down, and the um, older gentleman walked onto the stage, and he started with the story. He said, the father, his son, and a friend went on a boat trip in the ocean. And while they were there, a storm came. And um, big waves, and they overturned their boat. His, the father, son, and his friend, son's friend, they all ended up in the water. The father was next to the boat. He was able to grab a boat, and he had a rope in his hand. And he had a choice to throw the rope to one of the boys because he had no time to save both of them. The waves were so big that he only had time to save one of them. He had a choice to throw a rope to his son, or to his son's friend. The father knew that his son was a Christian, and if he dies today, he is going to meet with God in heaven, and he will be with him forever. His friend, on the other hand, was not a Christian, and if he dies and perishes today, he is going to go in an eternal damnation. And he made a choice. He threw a rope to his friend, son's friend, and by the time he pulled him to the boat, his son had drowned. While he was sharing his story, on the back row there was a couple of youths sitting and they were talking, having fun, and all of a sudden they stopped and they started listening. And he finished his sermon and he was walking out, uh, out of the church. They came up to him and they said, is it really true? Can this be possible? Can a father save someone else and let his son die? And he said, it is true, and it is possible. I was that father, and your pastor was a friend of my son's. 
But isn't that what God did for every one of us? The Bible says God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that we wouldn't perish, we wouldn't die, but have an everlasting life. That is exactly what the Father did. For your sins and mine, He gave His Son. His Son came and He died on the cross for your and my salvation. And today we are here because of Jesus Christ. Today we are here celebrating His resurrection. We are celebrating Him becoming alive again and giving us life. And it says, whoever sh shall believe in me, he'll not die, but live forever. And that's what the hope we have, that's what we believe in. We believe in the resurrection. We believe that one day, even if we die here on earth, because that's what everybody, it's happened to everybody, but we will live with him forever. Billy Graham said these words and they, you know, they went through all his life. He says, one day you will hear that Billy Graham died. And we heard that a while ago, maybe a month or so ago. But he says, don't believe that. Because I will be more alive then than I am here on earth. Because he is alive with Jesus Christ in heaven forever. He will never die again. That is what happened to the believers when they, when they accept Jesus Christ. They have a hope of resurrection. Hope of being with him after we die on this earth. And a lot of times we pay attention to the resurrection in the, the, the Passover. In Russian it's Pascha. Uh, it, it loses a little meaning to it. Because the Bible says, Pascha nasha Christos zaklen is on us. Right? Our Passover is Jesus Christ who died for us. But a lot of times we look at the resurrection and we forget the death of Jesus Christ. I want to look into uh, this a little more today and kind of a little open up of what happened during Passover. It's a little bit confusing today to the kids, especially um, Easter, Russian Pascha, and then Passover. And when they hear all three of these, they were like, so what are we celebrating? And then Vaskresenia, so it's resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what are, we, what are we celebrating? How do we understand what this really means? And that is very important because I will be speaking to the fathers today as well. I will be speaking a little later on to the fathers why this is important to teach our kids. But let, let's, look, let's look at what happened. Uh, why do we have this celebration? You know, uh, the people of Israel, they had three celebrations that they were to come to the, uh, to the, to the temple and celebrate. One of them was a Passover, Eli Pascha. But how it happened... We read in the Bible, we read in Exodus, I'm not going to read because of the timing, but we read in Exodus chapter 12, you can, um, how people of Israel were in bondage, in slavery, in Egypt. And if we look symbolically, we can say that Egypt is this world. The Pharaoh that was holding them in this slavery is devil that is holding a lot of people in this world also today. And people are starting to cry to God and say, God, come redeem us, save us from this slavery, from this bondage that we are in. And 430 years passed, and God finally heard their cry, and he sends Moses. Moses comes in, and he's, he, he's talking to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. Pharaoh didn't want people go. Devil doesn't want a people go just like that. There is a battle, there is a spiritual fight that needs to happen. And so he comes into Pharaoh and says, let my people go. And then he shows him his, his power, his might, through the plagues that he sends to overcome every single God that Egyptian people believed in. And he sends plague, plague for everyone, one after another after another. And then he comes to the last one, where he said, if you don't let my people go tomorrow, Every firstborn in your household will die. But then he gives the commandment to Moses and all the people of Israel. He says, there is a way out for you. You are to take a lamb with the family. Slaughter it and take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorstep and the casings around the door. That will be a sign 
for the angel of death when he will be passing by to see the sign on your doors and he will pass over. That's why they're celebrating Passover. They pass over and they, whoever was in the house, they did not die. You know what's interestingly, um, that it doesn't matter, it didn't matter who was in the house. Was, it, was all the people holy? Probably not. Were they sinners? Of course. But they were under the protection of the blood of the Lamb. The sign that was on the door for the angel of death and he passed by. However, houses that didn't have, didn't have no sign on their doors, every single person that was first born in a the house, they died. So for example, if the father was the firstborn, and then there was a child that was firstborn, and the animals that was firstborn, everything died. Everybody. And so we looked into this, and then God said, you are to celebrate the Passover every year. And how would you do that? And he gives them an example. You are to take a lamb, sacrifice it, take the blood, and then the whole night, through the night, the whole family was sitting by the table. They were eating the Passover lamb, the sacrificial lamb, and then the father was telling his children why they're celebrating Passover. The father was telling the children of all the miracles and everything that God did, how he freed them from slavery of Egypt and took him into the promised land. So today when our children ask, what is Passover? Fathers, what do we do? Do we sit down and we explain to them everything that God did in our life? Are we sitting down and saying, okay, this is, this is why we're remembering the Passover. Is God giving us His Son as a sacrificial lamb who came, who shed His blood, and through His blood today we have the protection. And parents, you have the rights to use the blood of Jesus Christ to put on the doors and casing of your houses. Every single person, we have the rights to use the blood to put around the doors and casing of our mind so that the devil doesn't have access to it. We have the blood of Jesus Christ who washes all of our sins. And we can come to him and celebrate the Passover. But he didn't... But he didn't um, he did not stay in the tomb. Yes, he died for our sins and transgressions. He died, he gave his life. He shed his blood. But see, that's all that the people of Israel celebrated. Is the sacrificial lamb being brought in for the sins of all the people. However, in the New Testament we see this next step. He didn't just die because he died for our для нашего искупления. In English, it will be for our redemption. But then there is a next step that happened. When he died, something happened. If you remember, the Bible says that he took upon himself all, all of our sins. He who had no sin took all of our sins and was crucified. And I want us to remember a story from the Old Testament. Of the three young men, Sidrach, Mesach, and Abednego. Remember, they were the king Nebuchadnezzar, he built a big statue. He called all the people and said, You are to worship this statue. And the three young men refused to do that. And he called them up and says, Why are you refusing to worship this idol? And they said, We worship only our God. He is able to save us from, from, from your hands. But even if it's not, we're going to die. We're going to go and we're going to be with him. And so he commands to throw him into the furnace that is burning hot. Like seven times more than usual, than normal. And what happened when they are throwing all their bonds from their hands and their feet as they were bonded? They fall off and they stood up in the middle of the fire. And fire had nothing to do to them. Didn't do anything to them. Now Nebuchadnezzar sees this and he calls them out. They came out and they didn't even have a smell of fire on their clothes. 
That was a victory that was won. But if we see it symbolically in Jesus Christ, it happened the same thing. He was bounded by all of our sins. And after he, he's dead, the Bible says he went into the hates. He went в места преисподни. And the, the dead and the hell, they thought that Jesus came here, this is it. He is not going to come out. We're going to keep him here. There is no more life after death. But Jesus stood there. All of our, all his bond, all what he was bonded with fell off of him. He stood victorious in the middle of hell and says, Hell, where is your sting? Dead, where is your victory? Because they had no power over him. He came in, he grabs the keys from the hell and from the dead, and he walks out victorious. Hallelujah. Praise God. He walks out with the keys from heaven, from hell and the dead. And today he is in control. And that's what we're celebrating is his resurrection. We're celebrating two, two events from the, from the Passover or Easter. We're celebrating our redemption through the death of Jesus Christ. And we're also celebrating our justification. Because the Bible says... Um, Мы оправданы, воскресением Иисуса Христа мы оправданы. Through His resurrection, we are justified. So I want in this pray, I want to glorify our God. I want to glorify Jesus Christ for what He has done. And from now on, of course, we will know exactly what Passover is. We'll know exactly what Easter is. And we know what Pascha is. Next time when we gather all family together, it's not about Easter bunny. It's not about eggs that they collect on the fields. It's not about that. It's about the one who gives us life. It's about the one who gives us a promise. Those who believe in me will have a life, life with abundance, an everlasting life with Jesus Christ. Amen.